You're watching BBC World News, and this is our main headline. The U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump says he's on his way to Mexico. He's going to meet Enrique Peña Nieto, the country's president, in a private meeting later this Wednesday. Well, it was an invitation he accepted from President Nieto. Professor Harley Shaken is head of the Latin America Center at the University of California in Berkeley. Uh, we can speak to him now. Professor, what was your reaction when uh, you heard this news? It only came out a couple of hours ago. Well, as you know, this has been a very unusual political year in the United States. My immediate reaction is just when I thought I'd seen it all, this was very, very different. There are many places I thought Donald Trump might be on Wednesday, uh, but Mexico City was not one of them. What is he going to say to Mr. Peña Nieto that will appease the Mexican people after everything he has said, much of which has actually been fairly offensive to Mexican people? Uh, he is widely reviled in Mexico. In fact, piñatas, which you hit with the bat uh, to break open in his image, are a very hot seller across the country. His challenge is there are many things he could say to President Peña Nieto, but he needs to say something to him that won't alienate a core part of his base in the United States. That's a much narrower set of options. I suspect he will seek to appear presidential, maintain a cordial personal demeanor, but a tough line, and use that to show later in the day when he gives his immigration speech, he knows how to speak with the president. Just the existence of the meeting gives him a bit of stature. Professor, can you think back uh, to recent history? Go back as far as you care to, but when was the last time a president won an election without the majority of the Latino vote in the United States? Uh, well, that's possible to do. Actually, President George W. Bush won without a majority of the vote. The vote was significantly smaller in 2000 and 2004, but he got over 40 percent of the vote. Uh, his successors since then, whether John McCain or Mitt Romney, that vote slid precipitously. Mitt Romney, at around 27 percent of the vote, caused enormous alarm uh, in the Republican establishment and a report written after his presidential loss that the Republicans urgently need to reach out to the uh, Latino vote, the largest, the fastest growing vote in the United States. And Donald Trump has gotten the nomination by going in precisely the opposite direction. Latin America doesn't generally have military dictatorships anymore. In fact, I can't think of a single one in the 1970s and 80s. They seem to be everywhere. Has uh, that part of uh, the American continent, South America, diminished in importance to American security uh, in terms of its sphere of influence? Uh, I think it's still a very critical area, but in reality, it, it does not have a high political profile or a lot of attention within the United States, particularly among Republicans. It is a question of real neglect where the geography is immutable. The countries of Latin America are the neighbors of the United States. They're not really on the political agenda until Donald Trump, in effect, by making immigration and a very hostile attitude towards undocumented immigration, or really immigration more generally, a centerpiece of his campaign, which actually won the Republican nomination. Professor Harley Shaker, I must say, very interesting to hear your thoughts, and thanks for sharing them with us here on BBC World News. Thank you.